हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर सविता फ्रॉम महाराजा अग्रसेन यूनिवर्सिटी बद्दी हिमाचल प्रदेश टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल गोल्स ओवरव्यू साइरेट एंड मार्च बिहेवियरल अंडर द पेपर मैनेजीरियल इकोनॉमिक्स आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल द स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल to understand the behavioral theory of the firm understand about the firm as a collision understand how different groups form the goals and also understand how conflicting goals are resolved by alternate management levels the traditional microeconomic theory of firm behavior considers profit maximization to be the sole goal of a firm it is considered that though a firm can face alternate markets that is perfect competition monopolistic competition oligopoly or monopoly but in every case the owners will seek to maximize the profits only in contrast the managerial theories of the firm or organization consider the firm to be a collision firm is not owned by a single owner rather by multiple stockholders the interests of these stockholders managers workers consumers and suppliers may clash the focus of behavioral model of sirat and march is to explain the models of clash resolution form as a collision the form which is being considered in this model is mainly a large multi product firm owned by a number of stockholders owners of firm and managers of firm are two different groups firm is generally considered to operate in imperfectly competitive market as information is not complete uncertainty prevails this type of assumption about a firm is more realistic each group within a firm be a owner manager workers consumers and suppliers will have different utility functions owners will seek to maximize profits managers will seek better salaries and power workers will seek higher wages and better conditions to work consumers will seek low price but more variety and quality and so on but out of all these groups the most important group is considered to be managers followed by shareholders and workers as it is shown in the figure also how different groups form the goals the most important feature of the behavioral theory is that it doesn't focus directly on the goals of a multi product large firm rather tries to explain the process that is how these goals originate according to sirat and march the goals of firms originate mainly because of demands of alternate groups these groups further depend on 
availability of information expectations aspirations and achievements of other groups in same or other forms the basic dichotomy and the structure of form is accepted in the behavioral model in this dichotomy on one hand there is the organization as a whole called as form and on the other hand there are the individual groups and subgroups within the form the individual groups and subgroups within the form will have different objective than form as a whole further it is considered that demands and past achievements are highly correlated demands of each group do not remain static and as keep on changing according to past achievements of group and that of other groups in getting their demands met and other changes in the form and its environment here changes in form are very significant because if form performance remains static or stagnant demands may also remain static fourth one is role of time lag by time lag we mean the lag between past achievements and future aspirations according to sirett and march this time lag can be used by the form to generate and accumulate surplus which eventually can be used for conflict resolution conflict between different groups as the demands of various groups and subgroups may be in continuous conflict with each other and the groups may be continuously bargaining with each other role of top management the role of top management is extremely significant in sirett and march model not only the top management sets the goals of the firm as the goals may be in conflict with various groups within the firm top management works towards reconciliation of goal two according to sirett and march a firm has mainly five goals one is how much to produce that is a production goal inventory goal sales goal market share goal and profit goals production goals mainly it is the production department which takes care of production goals smooth production process also implies that production is eventually distributed over time and seasonal as well as cyclical variations in demand are taken care of if demand is too high it may require overworking by workers and other factors of production similarly if demand dips it may lead to overproduction and layoff of workers inventory goal this goal either may come from production department or from sales department in some instances the firm may have a separate inventory department too production department will always seek sufficient stock of raw materials while the sales department will seek sufficient stock of finished product third one is sales goals the strategy for sales will be a part of sales goals market share goal it may further involve 
market research, analyzing the competitors and deciding the advertisement strategy. Fifth one, profit goal. Top management sets the profit goal to satisfy the shareholders. Furthermore, as the firm may have relied on banks and other financial institutions for its financing, profit goals also act as a benchmark to satisfy them. According to Siret and March, law of diminishing returns operates even in case on top managers' abilities to take decisions. Therefore, as the goals increase, the efficiency of decision-making may decrease. Therefore, the firms mainly focus on satisfying behavior. The concept of satisfying behavior was originally given by Simon. He writes, among the common constraints which are not themselves, the object of rational calculations are 1. The set of alternatives open to choice. Second, the relationship that determine the payoff satisfaction's goal attainment as a function of the alternative that is chosen. And thirdly, the preference ordering among payoffs, the selection of particular constraints and the rejection of others for incorporation in the model of rational behavior involves implicit assumptions as to what variables the rational organism controls and hence can optimize as means to rational adaption and what variables it must take as fixed. Next one is means for conflict resolution. As various groups compete with each other for their individual group specific goals, there is continuous struggle and bargaining within the firm. Interestingly, this doesn't lead to cues within the firm and firm keep own performing in stable manner as before. The reason for stability can be listed as the group have limited bargaining time and may not be aware or examine all the alternatives open to them. The budget share allotted to each department also acts as a constraint. There may be penalty involved with underutilization or overutilization of the budget. Past history of goal setting and achieving or not achieving the goals. Clear delegation of authority also minimizes conflicts. The main means or channels used for conflict resolution are first of all cash payments. The managers and workers receive cash salary. Owners receive dividend etc. Second one is incentive. In behavioral theory incentives imply side payments like funding a research project if a scientist within the firm need to be incentivized. Slack payments. Organizational slack consists in payments to the members of the collision in excess of what is required to maintain the organization. According to behavioral theory, this slack may be earned by every group. The managers may receive it in 
फॉर्म ऑफ फैंसी ऑफिसेस एंड कार्स वर्कर्स में रिसीव इट इन फॉर्म ऑफ वेजेस हायर देन मार्केट वेजेस कस्टमर्स में रिसीव इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिस्काउंट्स एंड शेयर होल्डर्स में रिसीव इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ हायर डिविडेंड्स ऑल दिस इज पॉसिबल ओनली इफ बिजनेस पीरियड इज फेवरेबल so that sufficient surplus is generated and there is sufficient time lag available between aspirations sequential attention to demand the most important aspect of conflict resolution is sequential attention to demand that is demand of various groups be met priority wise in peak production period production department will get priority but if focus is on sale or market share the priority may change accordingly decentralized decision making now we will discuss decision making at top management level budget allocation according to bargaining skills three things are taken into consideration while allocating the budget and that is firstly goals of the firm secondly availability of resources and the thirdly bargaining skills of head of each department do top management does keep some funds aside these funds can be used at its own discretion at any stage as per requirement the decisions by top management are based on bounded rationality complete information may not be sought as information is not free collecting information about all the alternatives can be uneconomical time wise too as no detailed cost benefit analysis is undertaken one can conclude that top management acts in limited rational way information is generally searched only if some problem is there here the concept of position bias comes in the fore the decision of various managers for security and power in the organization leads to this bias just to show importance of their demand they may overstate the requirement and this may eventually lead to the upward bias in the cost structure of the firm furthermore information may be distorted or underreported decision making at lower management level the day to day routine decisions are taken in a simplified manner by the established norms and rules within the firm the administrative staff follows the principle of learning by doing and learns from past successes and mistakes field methods are not repeated next is uncertainties faced by firm sirat and march explain two types of uncertainties faced by a firm that is the market uncertainty and the uncertainty about competitors reaction the market uncertainty can be partly avoided by collecting information because of market uncertainty firm mainly depends on short term decisions and avoid long term decisions interestingly in term of uncertainty arising because of oligopolistic interdependence the behavioral theory 
choose to be quiet by assuming tactic collusion among existing firms. Criticism of behavioral theory. The behavioral theory is an entirely different concept and differ from traditional microeconomic theory of firm behavior in a number of respects. In traditional theory, assumes firms to be managed by owners only. This means that owner and entrepreneur is same. There is no gap between ownership and management. But in behavioral theory, firm is considered to be a collision of groups with conflicting interests. In traditional theory, the firm has only one objective and that is maximization of profit. Whereas in behavioral theory, the objective of firm are many and are decoded by top management. In traditional theory, maximizing behavior, firm tries to maximize profit. Whereas in behavioral theory, satisfying behavior, the interest of these stockholders, managers, workers, consumers and suppliers may clash. The focus of behavioral model of Siret and March is to explain the models of clash resolution. Therefore, the objective is to satisfy each and every group. In traditional theory, complete information is assumed the entrepreneur will have perfect knowledge of all possible alternatives and the outcomes. Therefore, global rationality prevails. But in behavioral theory, accepts asymmetric information rather concludes that the decisions by Top management are based on bounded rationality. Complete information may not be sought. Collecting information about all the alternatives can be unconditional time-wise too. As no detailed cost-benefit analysis is undertaken, one can conclude that top management acts in limited rational way, information is generally searched only if some problem is there. In traditional theory, it is assumed that there is no conflict of goals between individual and organization. Whereas in behavioral theory, the interests of stockholders managers, workers, consumers, and suppliers may clash. Traditional theory assumes firm's rationality since very beginning. In behavioral theory, firm is adaptive organization. Firm learns from its successes and mistakes. Traditional theory is a short run and long run theory, whereas behavioral theory mainly a theory for short run. The concept of industry equilibrium is not explained in the behavioral theories. It does talk about origin of conflict between different subgroups and their resolution but doesn't provide any explanation on how conflict resolution and equilibrium can be achieved at industry level. The behavioral theories fails to explain the determination of equilibrium output and price, while this explanation is very convincingly given by traditional microeconomic theory of firm. As we cannot predict how industry equilibrium is achieved, one cannot comment on stability or instability of equilibrium.
the threat of new entrants in market and resultant change in behavior not explained there is no doubt in the fact that the behavioral theory of farm chooses different approach as compared to other managerial theories too the basic focus of all these theories managerial as well as behavioral is on divorce between ownership and management while baumol theory focus on sales revenue maximization under a given profit constraint maris model talks about managerial enterprise while the williamson model explain the role of managerial discretion in all managerial theories focuses solely on utility maximization and discretion of managers in contrast the behavioral theory is more comprehensive as the form is considered to be a collision of groups that is stockholders managers workers consumers and suppliers with conflicting interests so students let's now summarize what we have learned in this module the traditional microeconomic theory of firm behavior considers profit maximization to be the sole goal of a firm in contrast the managerial theories of the firm or organization consider the firm to be a collision firm is not owned by a single owner rather by multiple stockholders the interests of these stockholders managers workers consumers and suppliers may clash each group within a firm be it owners managers workers consumers and suppliers will have different utility functions owners will seek to maximize profits managers will seek better salaries and power workers will seek higher wages and better conditions to work consumers will seek low price but more variety and quality and so on but all of these groups the most important group is considered to be managers followed by shareholders and workers according to sirat and march the goals of firms originate mainly because of demands of alternate group these demands further depend on availability of information expectations aspirations and achievements of other groups in same or other forms the basic dichotomy in the structure of firm is accepted in the behavioral model in this dichotomy on one hand there is the organization as a whole called as firm and on the other hand there are the individual groups and sub groups within the firm the individual groups and sub groups within the firm will have different objectives than firms as a whole further it is considered that demand and past achievements are highly correlated demand of each group do not remain static and as keep on changing according to past achievements that is of groups and that of other groups in getting their demands met and 
other changes in the form and its environment. Here, changes in form are very significant because if form performance remains static or stagnant, demands may also remain static. The role of top management is extremely significant in Sarat and March model. Not only the top management sets the goals of the firm as the goals may be in conflict with the various groups within the firm, top management works toward reconciliation of goals too. According to Sarit and March, a firm has mainly five goals, production goals, inventory goals, sales goals, market share goal and profit goal. According to Sarit and March, law of diminishing returns operates even in case of top managers' abilities to take decisions. Therefore, as the goal increase, the efficiency of decision making may decrease. Therefore, the firms mainly focus on satisfying behavior. As various groups compete with each other for their individual group specific goals, there is continuous struggle and bargaining within the firm. Interestingly, this doesn't lead to cues within the firm and firm keep on performing in stable manner as before. The main means or channels used for conflict resolution are cash payments, incentives, slack payments, sequential attention to demand and decentralization decision making. The decisions by top management are based on bonded rationality. Complete information may not be sought as information is not free. Collecting information about all the alternatives can be uneconomical time-wise too. As no detailed cost-benefit analysis is undertaken, one can conclude that top management acts in limited rational way. Information is generally searched only if some problem is there. The day-to-day -day routine decisions are taken in a simplified manner by the established norms and rules within the firm. The administrative staff follows the principle of learning by doing and learns from past successes and mistakes. Field methods are not repeated. Sarit and March explain two types of uncertainties faced by a firm, market uncertainty and the uncertainty about competitors' reaction. The market uncertainty can be partly avoided by collecting information interestingly in term of uncertainty arising because of oligopolistic interdependence the behavioral theory chooses to be quiet by assuming tactic collusion among existing firms the behavioral theory of firm chooses different approach as compared to other managerial theories. Baumol theory focuses on sales revenue maximization under a given profit constraint. 
marriage model talks about managerial enterprise while the williamson model explains the role of managerial discretion in all managerial theories focus is solely on utility maximization and discretion of managers in contrast the behavioral theory is more comprehensive as the firm is considered to be a collusion of groups that is stockholders managers workers consumers and suppliers with conflicting interests it further convincingly elaborates on the process of conflict resolution still for being considered as part of microeconomic theory the th this theory needs further elaboration the determination of equilibrium output and price and concept of industry equilibrium is not explained in the behavioral theory thank you